thoughts and words go forth to produce themselves. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words never. Luke 21 33. We must learn the art of divine reasoning, yet we have to go beyond it, for reasoning is of the mind. Yet that which is real is not of the mind, although the mind is the vehicle through which it functions when the mind is cleansed of all that comes. Now we know that divine reasoning is a means whereby you are able to reason things out for yourselves. Divine reason enables you to reason spiritually. And for instance, if I would say to you this, God must be infinite. Yes, well he must be infinite in nature otherwise he could not exist. There is no time. Time does not exist at all in the universe, it is only made up in man's mind. Man measures time according to the movement of the planets, the sun and the moon, and so forth, and therefore he counts the hours, the days, and the minutes and the years. But in time there is no time, in fact, it is timeless. There is no beginning, therefore if there was a beginning something would have to begin that, and therefore something would have to begin that. And you reason and you say, well that is true. And you can go back ad infinitum and you will find that something must have been that never had a beginning. And you come to conclusion that God must be infinite in nature. And, there cannot be anything outside him, if there was anything outside him. He could not be infinite. That is true, that is divine reason. Therefore you say again, well if he is infinite, he must be everywhere. There cannot be anywhere where he is not. That is true too, that is divine reason. And then you come to the conclusion, well, Jesus said that, now when I remember it, I read it somewhere, and he said, know ye not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Extraordinary. Then you see that Jesus knew all about it before you see it. Therefore you come to the conclusion that it is a truth. That if you come to a conclusion about anything it means to say that you have closed your mind regarding it. The mind must be free. Divine reason must go to the very beyond, yet it is not the beyond. Because what you are doing is you are using your mind to reason divinely. And that which is truth is beyond your mind. You do not know what it is. But it leads you to that particular barrier, as it were, and when the mind begins to cease thinking and reasoning, you find that there is no barrier at all. That which is, is ever present, always was. It is timeless, infinite, therefore it is. Therefore it cannot be made up in your mind, what it is because you do not know what it is. You only make things up in your mind that you know something about, but you cannot create an idea of that which you do not know. The infinite then in this reality is beyond your mind. If you try to make an idea of it, an image of it, you have lost it. But that which is, is yourself, that creativeness within man. That creativeness that is the livingness in you, that is that which is eternal and ever-present. It cannot be anything else. Therefore it is when the mind ceases to think that you reach that which is beyond the mind. I have often been in that particular state when I have ceased to think. And I have found then, at that particular time, that I could not think at all. My mind was in that state of complete quiescence. Nothing could move it as calm as the lake's surface, without the single breeze that would ruffle the surface. So silent was the surface, I could not think, and there in that silence I did. There was that knowing. Not thinking or creating in my mind something about it, but that which was, really is and is eternal and ever-present, was there. And I knew that I was it. That is then the state of mind when it is quiet, silent, then reality is. Now you try, don't you, to build an idea in your mind about what reality is. But I have told you so often, I am not going to give some idea about reality. I am going to take all your ideas of reality away from you and by doing so then you will find reality. But if I give you another idea, no matter how great the idea could be, most elevated idea, so elevated that it is beyond anything you had ever thought of, it would still be an idea but it would keep you from knowing what reality is. Keep you from experiencing reality as it is itself, life. Therefore I am speaking in relative terms and I have got to speak in these words because there is no other means how we can communicate. But I speak those words to show you what is relative, to show you what the mind is, how it reasons, how it creates ideas, and it does all these various things. I am showing you that that is not truth. The mind of man is steadily unfolding the knowledge of the world of things, this is a process that we must understand, for without understanding this process we are caught up in it, and the same prevents that which is real from expressing its true nature in us. Knowledge can become binding unless we are aware of this fact. Wisdom alone is freedom, but wisdom is of the spirit. Knowledge is of the mind. We must be able to understand by discerning our thought action, and we will find that it moves from within, outwards.
then we will find that we are identical in this nature with the first principle of the universe. Because everything works from within, outwards. it is important for us to know this, yet if there is no understanding of the mind which is yourself slash myself, the question as to whether there is reality or not has very little meaning if we are caught up in our mental reactions, beliefs, etc. Therefore it does not matter, one iota, for the mind that is caught up in ideas, whether reality exists or not. And if one is caught up in our beliefs, it does not matter to that individual whether reality exists or not because he is living in his belief. The world is living in beliefs today. That is the cause of all our misery. If we got rid of our beliefs, our different opinions, ideologies and all these things that separate man from man, we would have goodwill between man and man and we would have no misery at all. But we have so many beliefs and ideas in the mind that everyone is quarreling about whether their idea is right or wrong. And the fact is, that they will die for their belief, their idea, when it is entirely a false thing altogether, a thing self-created made up in the mind, when it is not reality or God they think it is. The heathen is an individual who is nearer to God than many of them. Individuals who follow a religion. For the simple reason, that he to a great extent does not believe in any of the beliefs that people have, their ideas. He is not caught up in them therefore he does not fight and quarrel about his belief. An atheist is much about the same. He says there is no God, there is no such thing as a God. He does not believe there is anything in the world such as a God. Of course, naturally, he has been caught up in the idea of the material things and he has seen material things everywhere. And he sees some form of activity everywhere and he says there can be no God. Because he sees various activities in the universe, in the mind of man, in ideas, in ideologies, in religions and so forth. But he sees people quarreling and fighting and killing each other because of it. Now all the misery in the world today is created out of man's mind. Man creates the misery. Man is responsible for the misery and man alone is responsible for the ending of that misery. The principle of combustion is the same whether it is a large or small fire and so it is with the creative power that first created the universe and that which is individualized in us. This individualization is not separation. But if we are caught up in our thinking how can we know that which is thinking, that which is creating? What do you do when you think? Are you caught up in your thinking and your thoughts? If you can discern your thinking, discern your thought action, discern the movements in your mind, then you will know what your thinking is. You will know how your mind is made up, but if you are caught up in your thinking, you will never know that which is thinking. You will never come to know that it is. You will never know what it is but you will come to know that it is. If we are caught up in our creating or our creations how can we know that which is creative? The problem is vast and complex. It lies in you and me and no one can solve it for us. No teacher can solve it, no savior can solve it, no organized compulsion can solve it, only yourself, myself, for therein lies the essence itself in you and me and not outside us. You look to the outside for the solving of your problems. You look to a leader for that solving of your problems. But you are the individual that can only solve the problem because you are the problem. There is no other problem except the individual. The individual is the problem. The problem is not outside the individual because the individual is the problem. If you are caught up in your beliefs and your greeds and your cravings and all those sort of things that is a problem, therefore you are the problem. Therefore you have got to know yourself. And by knowing yourself you dissolve all these things that are hindering the expression of that which is real in itself, that which is creative. That which itself is love and wisdom. That which is, in itself is goodwill and peace. You cannot have peace outside yourself until you have peace within you. And to have peace you must have peace within yourselves before you have peace in the world, because you are the problem. You are the cause of all the world misery. There is no other cause except the individual that you will blame it on anybody or anything external to yourself because you do not want to pin it upon yourself. But unless we recognize this great truth, that it is within ourselves all our problems begin and end, we will never get out of the misery in which we are in today. Divine reason will lead us toward it, and although it does not go contrary to divine reason, it goes beyond divine reason. My way of teaching is to prevent you from making an image of reality. If I take away all your images, all your beliefs, all your ideas of reality, and you will know that reality is, but if I only give you another idea of reality, however more advanced than the one you have, it is still an idea even more subtle and more difficult to get rid of because you again become the prisoner in your ideal. So reality is not an ideal, it is not an idea, it is not made up in your mind and you will never know it until you have ceased creating ideas about it. Some people will say that I take everything away from you and give you nothing in its place. 
If I did give you something in its place it would be a limitation, however great it could be. But if I take away from you that which is preventing the expression of reality which is not an idea nor an image nor a belief, there will be no limitation, for reality is everything in itself. Ever present, and that which is ever present is not made up in your mind. Yet you are limited by your ideas which is not reality. Therefore I can only explain that which is not truth, then that which is truth will reveal itself to you. It is ever present and eternal, unlimited, unconditioned. But with your ideas you condition yourself. With your beliefs you condition yourself. And if you can discern how you are conditioning yourself, then your conditioning will cease. But if you cannot discern how your conditioning will cease, it will continue and you will be caught up in your conditioning. And your thinking and your actions will be according to that conditioning. That is how you think, that is how you act. You can easily see how a person acts. What is their conditioning? You can easily know what their conditioning is. If you follow a pattern of any kind you are conditioned. If you condition yourself by making an idea of reality an image of it, this will prevent you from truly knowing. Therefore divine reasoning and true discernment of that which is not reality will lead you to reality, and the Father will perform his own deeds through you. And that is why Jesus knew the whole truth about the thing was, I have myself of nothing, it is the Spirit of the Father who ever remaineth within me performing his own deeds. So it is the Father that was ever remaining within him that was performing his own deeds, because he himself was nothing. Now what do you make of yourself? Something? Well then if you make something of yourself, then you are limiting yourself. But if you can dissolve this self that is greedy, that is selfish, that has egotism, that is vanity, that is craving, and all these things, if you can eliminate that self which is a limitation and a hindrance through your conditioning, then that which is not a limitation, but that which is ever present, that which is eternal, that which all is and everything there is that will express itself through you. Then you will say, the Father whoever remaineth within me is performing his own deeds. That will be done, not mine. You cannot comprehend the immensity of the great universal intelligence. You cannot comprehend or even create an idea of the greatness and the mightiness of this tremendous mighty intelligence that is behind all the movement of the planets, the suns. And also in its lowliness, it is in its greatness, and in its greatness it exists in its lowliness. Then if you try by your own mind to comprehend and limit that, it would be a limitation. But that which is can give expression to itself through the instrument it created for that purpose, and humanity is that instrument. Why is it then that this mighty intelligence is not manifesting itself perfectly reflecting its own perfection? Because stupid man has created so many ideas about it. He has created cults, he has created religions and dogmas and creeds, he has created nationalities, he has created a society of divisions here and there, the high and the low. Man has divided himself into many parts, and he quarrels about them, they kill one another about them and they do not know whether they are true or not. Here is the tremendous state of man today. Then man is the evil in the world. The only evil that ever came into the world, came out of man's mind. It did not come out of that infinite perfect expression of the intelligence of the universe. It is the error will, the antagonisms, the greed, the selfishness, the nationalities, the divisions, is the foundation of the evil in the world. Separation is that evil. When man begins to throw away his ideas, his beliefs, his creeds, his dogmas, his nationalities, and reaches to that which in itself is the only living creative essence in the whole of humanity, then when he sees the wholeness of all things, harmony will be established and man will be at peace. But that peace must be established within himself before it will be outside himself. When we become aware of our thoughts and reactions to ideas, to beliefs, to all internal and external sensations and know what they are, we will not be caught up in the paralyzing suggestions that come from the crude thinking of the race. We will understand disease, worry, disability, therefore it will not be registered in the consciousness as a reality. Neither will it be in the subconscious mind nor will the subconscious mind accept it, to be expressed again when the opportunity arises. Are we not always looking for something outside ourselves to give us? Power to accomplish? We are deluding ourselves, creating images of something that does not exist, looking for truth from some outside source, that will only blind you to the truth itself. A person said to me the other day, is it necessary for me to go to church to find God? And I replied, if you go to church, God goes with you. If you go to a theater, God goes with you. But where you are, God is and where God is, you are. It makes no difference. If you believe in hell and you think there is a place in hell and you want to go there, well, God will be there with you. Because there cannot be any hell except in God because he is infinite and there is nothing outside him.
and he being infinite must be everywhere therefore he must be in hell too if hell is a place at all, and he must be the devil too because God is infinite in nature. God cannot divide himself into one thing or another. He cannot be the devil and God at the same time. One is and the other is not. So if God is, the devil is not. But is the non-existence of the devil that makes up the devil. So he was the liar from the beginning, as Jesus called him, the liar from the beginning. And the devil is the relative world, that is the devil in man's world. The world that man has made for himself, and that is hell too. So it is not a matter of finding God, but a matter of searching your own mind to find that which is preventing the Father from working in you and through you. It is not a matter of place or time, for there is no such thing, except in your mind. God reality must be ever present everywhere being infinite. In the light of this truth, then truth will reveal itself to you. Read these words again. You do not understand? When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. What do you mean by saying, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, and the words I speak to you all, I do not speak of my own accord. It is the Father who ever remains in me who is performing his own deeds. It does not matter how often you hear these words or say them, they will mean nothing to you if you make a mental image of them or if you imagine someone else, even Jesus, saying them. They must be alive in yourself to be real. It must be a living thing in yourself, the real, not outside yourself. It is not that someone else says it that makes it a reality to you. But you know that it is true to yourself that makes it a reality to you. When the Son of Man realizes he is the Son of God, the Father reveals himself to the Son. The Son knows that he and the Father are one, so the Father expresses himself through the Son, this comes when the divine love in the Son transcends all else. Nothing else except its love. Above everything it exists. Above everything, remember. Therefore then search in your own minds and see if that love is above everything in your world, in your lives. True expression is always assured when love rules our lives, when our minds are free from possessiveness, free from greed, free from envy, free from separation, which includes nationalities, creeds, etc. Then never a word can be out of place because you will not be conditioned. Therefore your thought and speech will be pure. This was the state of the master. The same can be for us also for the same life runs through all. And the great wonderful truth that the master showed us was this, that he was not different to ourselves. I am you and you and me and we and them, all one. There are other folds I must go to and bring them into so that there will be only one fold and one shepherd. That is to say that there are many different types of beliefs in the world. Many nationalities of the world who are separate folds but they themselves have separated themselves, made themselves separate folds. And the Master's words were clear and distinct. I must go and bring so that there will be one fold and one shepherd, and making you conscious of a state that perhaps has not been revealed to you before. As we think so we speak and our thoughts and words go forth to reproduce themselves in our lives and in the lives of others. Sir James Jean said these words, the whole universe is a mental phenomenon. Yet consciousness is not a product of the mind but a directing power within the mind itself. Thought is governed by law and the reason why we have so little faith is because we lack understanding of this fact. When we know that everything works according to divine law, we begin to know and feel the meaning of faith. Thy faith hath made thee whole, so simple is the rule when we understand. Wholeness is ever present, it is not something you have to create. Won't you be as wholeness is now? You do not create wholeness, it is. It exists at that very moment. It exists eternally. You can have that wholeness and completeness now. If wholeness was not now, it could never be. An utter impossibility. Faith is feeling and thought. The knowledge that the thought will bring about just what it is itself is understanding faith. But when faith and fear are linked together in ignorance we have a confusion of duality in which there is chaos and lack of confidence in ourselves. Faith and fear. One is uppermost and the other is down. When faith is up, fear is down. When fear is up, faith is down. These two are linked in the mind, they are mental creations, they are not reality. They are not the faith that Jesus said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. So in our belief in duality we pray in our confusion without result. So if your mind is confused and you pray how can you get any results with a mind confused? The first thing you do is to get rid of the confusion through understanding. If you live in opposites such as good and evil, success and failure, health, ill health and all the rest of dualities, you are in confusion are you not? And if you know that you are living in opposites you will get rid of these opposites. Unless your eye be single. If we do not understand this we will continue to condition ourselves and then rebel against this conditioning, 
thereby intensifying our troubles because we live in opposites which is a belief in the reality of our troubles. Everything works in accordance with divine law. The law of thought is as definite as the law of mathematics. When we realize that ill health, unhappiness, lack in every condition is the result of our conditioned thought, consciously or unconsciously, we will agree immediately that a working knowledge of the law governing our thought world is vitally important. It has been proved that thought takes root in the mind and produces fruit after its kind. Our thought then goes forth according to our conditioning. How are you conditioned? Look into your minds and you will see how you are conditioned. To improve on our living in this world of ours, we must first improve ourselves through our discernment of our thought-feeling reactions. For if we are caught up in them, they will show in our lives and environment. To be ignorant of this is to be like a child playing with fire. We have already learned that mind is one whole substance, quiescent in nature, underlying all things, and forms into ponderable substance into effects, which become visible to us. These effects are just mind in action. The cause is hidden from the ignorant who only see the effects which they react to. So these reactions help to sustain these effects in our lives whether we like them or not. That is the truth of the matter. Everything seen is effect, and as mind is the foundation of all effects and the only substance out of which things are created, we must know that the cause is within, but the outer is always giving expression to the inner, whether it be a universe, a planet, a man, a beast in the infinite mind, or a condition in the mind of man. Man not knowing himself becomes afraid. He fears this and he fears that. He does not understand himself. There is no use of saying, I have courage if your heart is full of fear. But if you discern why you are afraid then you will know and your fears will pass away, you will understand why you are afraid. And you will see that these things are made up in your mind, and self-created, belief in fear, a belief in something that will do you harm. A possible bad break occurs here, this spirit is perfect, it is creative. In itself it is life. Nothing has touched it, nothing can touch it. Consciousness and life are synonymous. And then you discern all the relative world and see it for what it is, you will see effects. You will see creation, but creation has no power of its own, it is only the uncreated that has the power. Nothing can touch than the uncreated. Life itself creates, but it remains uncreated. It remains eternal and ever-present. Your consciousness is the self, the same. Seek and you shall find it. But your consciousness is still creative, always remains creative. But in your ignorance, if you are caught up in your creations, in your fears through misunderstanding them, then you will have fear. And in your fears you are lost. Oh, have that which would give you the knowledge that I want you to have, but I cannot do it. No one can do it. There is no teacher can give it to you. You must be lead to it and then you must drink from the fountain itself. You alone must drink from that fountain. That is what I have found. That is what you shall find also. It is imperative and immediate that we discern every thought feeling reaction that enters the mind. Whether it be from within or from without we must become aware of it. This is not so easy at first because of our habit of spontaneous reaction. We are reacting spontaneously because we are caught up in fear. We must discern without judgment, without comparison, without feeling, so that we can free ourselves. If you are caught up in your judgment, if you are caught up in your discernment, then you will not be free. You see, if you look upon these things impersonally, as you look upon a screen or a picture, then you will know what is in your mind. You will know that it is your own creations. You will know it has no power except the power you give it, then you will be no longer afraid of it. And after all your own creations has been seen and dissolved, that which is eternal and ever-present being present, takes its place. For if we are caught up in the discernment we are still bound, our thoughts will still perpetuate what we think and feel. In other words, we will be forever conditioning ourselves. And this is the beginning of self-knowledge which is the beginning of freedom. So if you are caught up in your discernment, if you fear that you judge, you look upon good and bad, you're then caught up. You will still be conditioning yourselves. The spirit is free. Oh my God, to know that wonderful truth that the spirit is free. It is no longer tainted in any way whatsoever. It is free, completely free. It is love and wisdom, nothing can touch it. It is only when you enter into the relative world and are caught up in the relative world, you are conditioned. But if you discern how you are conditioned, you can free yourself. The vast scheme of nature is lavish wherever we look. The process of creation and recreation is forever in operation. We have not yet realized the universality of all substance that consciousness and mind are the active principles which set cause into effect and thus we are related to all that exists. The 
first thing I do to a sick person is to show him or her what mind is. Action means, and they will realize themselves that the conditioning is of the mind and the body has no power of its own. So the conditioning is of the mind, the mind is conditioned and therefore you have your troubles. Look into your mind and see how it's been conditioned. But if you are caught up in your conditioning you will never know. So the body is just a sounding board for our thought feeling reactions. Life built the body for its own self-expression. It is the temple of the living God, divinely created. If the patient will learn to understand that is not real, reality itself will manifest according to the understanding of the cause of the condition. The sick are generally reacting to old suggestions and suggestions that arise from the crude thinking of the race which has become habitual. It is the habit that can be eliminated only by understanding the cause. Then awakening comes the divine nature is not subject to sickness, etc. It is by patience and diligent observation of all that is false that we become aware of the ever-present reality. I am the Father our one means. I am the life. If we live in opposites we will see that we create both favorable and unfavorable conditions. This is the law of mind and action. We blame others for our lack, for our limitations, for our weaknesses, for our ill health. We dwell upon both fear and faith, good and evil because we do not discern that these impostures are both the same, the product of our minds caught up in duality, this is the great problem. Get rid of the idea of good and you will get rid of the idea of evil, they are both creations of the mind. In reality there is perfectness. There is neither good nor evil in love and wisdom. They are beyond all creations of man's mind. The discovery of the oneness of truth in which there is no duality, brings happiness and to discover truth there must be the understanding of the self through an inquiring mind. A mind that is alertly aware without condemnation, without identification or justification. Such an awareness brings an immediate release from the problem. Therefore the search is not for an answer to the problem, but an understanding of the problem itself. And that is you, that is me. The understanding the self solves the problem. It is only at the moment when your reactions arise that you can understand them. If you discipline your reactions to a particular pattern or follow a particular rule of conduct then you cannot discern your reactions. Freedom comes from the release from the reactions, not the disciplining of the reaction. So without understanding the inner, merely to change the pattern or to put a positive in the place of a negative, has very little meaning or release of the problem. To bring lasting reorganization in the outer we must begin with the self, and the ways of the self. The outer will then be transformed with intelligence, then you will know yourself to be, now, free from all conditioning. When you discern how you are conditioned and why, take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins, check him, and if he repents, forgive him. Even if he sins against you seven times in one day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. Luke 17, 3-4, that is to say, that you must have nothing and hold nothing against your brother. Because your brother is yourself, Love your neighbor as yourself. Benediction. Almighty One, Thou art all that exists. I have no place outside thee and time does not separate us, for we are one in thy timeless state. Thy omnipresence frees us from all my conditioning when I can see the cause within my mind. Thy omnipotence gives me all power in heaven and on earth because we are one. Thy omniscience gives me thy wisdom and knowledge to work in harmony with thy creation. Thy love is thy perfection in me, O beautiful one, hide from my eyes, O lovely one, all that seem unkind in others, so that thy love alone shall remain forever in me, O beloved one. Epilogue Think that then we can hide all that is unkind in others. It can be dissolved away immediately so that love that is eternal and ever-present would always remain in us. That then is the peace which we have within ourselves, that is the peace then that the world will have because we are the world.